Hello YouTube, Mr. Evans here with my vlog number 115. Today is, ooh, let me get this adjusted. <laughs> Today is Tuesday and the time is 5.35. I'm getting out of here right after this. Uh, a little later than I would have liked. Um, but, you know what, I got, I got some, some projects done. So even though I'm not really doing any grading or planning this week, pretty much just administering, it's not like the bell rings and then I just jet. Um, I'm kind of using this time to catch up on uh, things that I've kind of been putting off. Um, I'm pretty much caught up now, but um, I can, I'm going to use this time to start getting prepared for, uh, for after testing is over. Um, YouTube, today was a good day. Another good day. There were a couple of frustrating moments, not even bad moments, just frustrating moments. Um, and I did make some calls home, but I always make calls home um, during testing time, just because for me it's like, during this time, you have to take this seriously. Um, and so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just a, a point I, I, I try to make. I, I really want students to understand that, like, this week is an important week. This is not just business as usual. And if you usually mess around, go ahead and keep messing around this week. I want them to really understand the importance of this week. Um, and I think that they do. Because like I said, today was a good day. I'm very pleased with it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and read the wonder quote of the day, but it kind of, when I read this, uh, it kind of brought to mind just, well, let me just go ahead and read it. Um, today's wonder quote is, To me, every hour of the light and dark is a miracle. Every inch of space is a miracle. And that's by Walt Whitman. And the thing is, I would love to just talk about that, but I feel like that's something that I've talked about a lot already. So, I will talk about it, but I want to first start by making a comparison, because that was by Walt Whitman who wrote this poem that, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say I loved it when I first read it, but it stuck with me. And so I, I really thought of this other poem by, by Walt Whitman. It's called A Noiseless Patient Spider, and I just want to read it to you. It's not really that long. A noiseless patient spider I marked, where on a little promontory it stood isolated, marked how to explore the vacant, vast surrounding it launched forth filament, filament, filament out of itself, ever unreeling them, ever tirelessly speeding them. And you, O oh my soul, where you stand, surrounded, detached, in measureless oceans of space, ceaseless, ceaselessly musing, venturing, throwing, seeking the spheres to connect them till the bridge you, you will need be formed. Sorry. Till the bridge you will need, till the bridge you will need be formed. Till the ductile anchor hold. Till the gossamer thread you fling catch somewhere, O oh my soul. That's a lot. So let me break this down. In case you didn't catch it, which the first time I read it, I did not catch it at all. Most people didn't in my, in my class when we read this. Um, it's about a guy who is, sees a little, uh, a little spider on a little promontory. And the promontory is like, it's just like a little island, you know, pretty small, probably like a little, a little patch of gravel or something. And it's surrounded by vast oceans of water. Right? So probably it's like raining or something. And it is trying to get out of that, uh, that space. It's trying to explore its surrounding by launching webs um, outside, trying to connect the web to something. And then he says, that's what my soul feels like. Like I am isolated. I'm surrounded by all of this emptiness. And I'm launching forth you know, poetry and musings and ideas hoping to connect to something. And that's what it feels like as a teacher pretty much every day. It's, it's one of the most isolating professions, even though you're surrounded by people. But as I've mentioned on this vlog before, when I'm actually doing the job, it's just me and my students. And my students aren't doing the same job as me. So, and they don't have the same standards for, what's, uh, for what works, right? So a lot of times I don't think they even really know if a connection's been made. So that's what I'm doing, you know? Um, that's what the, you know, Walt Whitman, the, the poem, you know, is, is doing. It's, it's this very solipsistic state sometimes where you're just like, I'm trying my best and I know I'm trying my best and I know I'm gonna keep trying my best to make connections 
to strike a chord, to make a difference. But I don't know if I am. I, 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 you, you never know, right? And so what's the cure for this? What's the cure for solipsism? Of course, there is no simple answer to it. But for me, where I've found some solace is in this quote. Every hour of light and dark is a miracle. Every inch of space is a miracle. It's not the big moments. That's the thing that I've really tried to drive home before on this vlog. It's the little ones. It's, you, you, you never know if you've made a connection. And, and, and I, I shouldn't say that's true because uh, there are times, but they're a lot rarer than you might think. Students don't just like come up and say like, hey, you did a good job as a teacher. I mean, sometimes they do, but it's, it's, it really is pretty rare. And even if they like you, it, you know, it, it's very easy to perceive. I mean, I, I would assume it's pretty easy to perceive that they don't because, you know, the more they like you, you know, the, 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 there's always something that they'll complain about. And, and I think, you know, we have such a tendency, first of all, to say more negative things than to say positive things. But also we have a tendency to hear the negative things more than the positive ones. And so... Even the best teachers, I would assume, still get negative comments, and I'm, I, I would assume that those, those comments still stick more than the compliments. It's just a sad, a sad truth, but if you find joy in the things that do happen, that is what gives meaning to this profession. And, 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 and even that's not 100% true because you know, you create the meaning for yourself as a teacher, right? But where you find the fulfillment, where you find that, that joy of, of having reached them, of having done something effective, of being able to be proud of yourself, you can find it in the, 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 the little moments. You can find it in everything, but only if you look for it. And that's the reason that I started talking about my gratitude practice on this channel. And that's the reason that I started talking about moments that made me smile every day. Because if you don't look for, I mean, they're always there, but if you don't look for them, if you don't, you know, pick them out and hold them up and say, I'm happy this happened, you can miss them. And only notice the places where your web doesn't connect. So I'm very happy to share with you the three moments that made me smile today. First one, pretty much the same as, well, no, it was not the same as yesterday, but it's one of the ones I said yesterday. So it, so it is the same as yesterday, it's just not, it wasn't my first one yesterday, that's what I meant. Um, Students were still working very hard today. Makes it so much better when I can just do my job rather than trying to get students to do theirs. Most of the students really were on task today. I'm so proud of them because it's not easy. And a lot of the, you know, I, I mentioned making calls home today. Even when I made those calls home, I tried to make it clear that like, but it's also not completely fair to just judge negatively because these students are really dealing with a lot right now. Um, another uh, moment that really made me smile, this is a very small, well, it's not even that small of a moment. One of my students, you know, we, we have uh, split testing environments in some of the classes, and the student was really asking to be with me, even though he was assigned elsewhere, which already just on its own feels great, because, you know, it's so easy to prove a point by resisting everything, right? That's what a lot of students do. Just to prove a point, just to really hurt my feelings. They say things like, oh good, I'm so glad I don't have to be in this boring room with this boring guy again. You know, they don't quite say it that dramatically usually, but you'd be surprised. This, the fact that this student even like would, would say, I, I wanna be here, why do, why do I have to go elsewhere? That was really big, but moreover, the reason this student asked to stay here was that he said, I know my other, uh, in the other room, a lot of my friends are there, and I know I'm not going to be able to focus. That's huge, you know, to, 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 to speak up and have that kind of responsibility. Good for that student. Really good for them. And finally, this is just, this is so small, but it, oh, it really lifted my spirits when it happened. The room does get hot sometimes, and I have fans, but I don't usually turn them on because they blow papers around, there's noise, and then i got to yell over the noise, but... Um, you know, during testing, it's like we're, we're silent anyway, and a little bit of noise isn't going to be a problem. And as long as I tell you to put your log on papers under your tablet, um, there shouldn't be any blowing around. So um, if, I think it was the middle of, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be positive here, middle of third period. Um, and the windows were already open. I opened them up 
first thing in the morning before it starts to get hot because then it's, you know, it's going to be cool. Uh, it's going to be a little cooler by the time it starts to get hot, right? But with this, I was like, okay, it needs to cool down a little faster. So I went and put my window fan in the window, turned that on, and the students that were by the window, like you could just, they were like so happy, just like, just like, yeah, yeah that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. It was just, it, it's so cool uh, when a student is grateful because, he, 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 you know, I bought that fan for this like exact purpose. And sometimes it feels like, you know, sometimes students make it where they're like, why'd you get this stupid little thing? This is too tiny. It's not making me feel better. You know, um, sometimes students, actually, you know, that's not even true. Students don't really do that anymore. But in the past, that kind of thing has happened, right? And so, uh, or, or even if it doesn't, you know, sometimes just them kind of being like, yeah, of course, turn the fan on. Like, like why didn't you do it earlier? You know, um, as opposed to these guys who kind of went out of their way to be like, we really appreciate that. Thank you. It's always cool to, can you hear that yelping outside? <laughs> Those kids are being crazy. Anyways, um, I feel like I rambled about that last one a lot, uh, way too much, but the point of the matter is, I tried a solution and my students appreciated the solution. So that's what that one comes down to. It's small, it's little, I know, but like I said, the little things do matter. Uh, I think that is where I will end the vlog for today. Again, you know, I got a little bit rambly towards the end there, so I apologize, but I hope you understand why. Because of that gratitude practice, right? It, 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 I really want to explain why these little moments are not so little to you. I really want you to understand that. So I'm going to go ahead and actually end the vlog now. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm grateful for you, YouTube, for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye, YouTube.